please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Dave Williams, editor here with today's video, the infamous dump and run fork oil change for standard adjustable forks. This works with the old school telescopic fork and the modern upside down fork. By standard adjustable, we mean the rebound adjuster and preload adjuster at the top and the compression adjuster usually is at the bottom. Sometimes there will be rebound in one leg and compression in the other leg. Over here, you have C mm -hmm. for compression and over there is R for rebound. Okay. But the screws will both be at the top and the preload is at the top. It also applies to those fork systems, like on the FZ09 comes to mind, where the preload adjusters are at the top and there's only rebound adjustability, not compression. So there's a rebound screw in one leg and the other one doesn't have anything, but there is compression in that other leg. It's just not adjustable. This also works with some non-adjustable forks that have a blank fork cap. The way you know is if you take the cap off, and the cap comes off and separates from the fork itself, that's a damping rod fork, different procedure. If you take the cap off and it stays all connected as one piece, even though the cap comes free and you can see the threads and pour the oil out, your non-adjustable fork is a cartridge fork and this procedure works. This does not work for the big piston fork, the BPF. That is a different procedure. The one that has the rebound and compression screws at the top and the preload adjustability at the bottom. Nor does it work for the best friend forever fork, the BFF or balance free fork from Showa that's come out in the last few years. No worky with that one. But it will work for 90% of all adjustable forks out there and some non-adjustable forks. Most likely you don't have a fork vise and regular vices suck at holding forks. So how do you get the cap off? Well, loosen the top triple clamp bolt or top yoke bolt first, leave the two at the bottom tight and crack the cap. Then pull the fork out and it should just be able to come off by hand or you might need a light wrench on it, but you'll be able to hold the tube effectively and get the cap off. Then reverse the procedure after you've done the oil change, snug up the cap as you'll see in the video, put it on, tighten the two lower bolts first, and tighten the cap at that point. Then tighten your upper triple clamp bolt. One last item, measure the height of your fork above the triple clamp. Take that measurement so that when you replace the fork, you put it back in at the same height. All right, let's uh, dive into our forks. The first thing to do is I'm just going to wipe all this off in case there's any crud on there because as we drop it down, we want to see what we're going. You can see some what looks like rust. So we run our fingers over it. It's actually very sharp. Yeah, that's definitely sharp. So prior to pushing the dust seal over that, that doesn't make any sense. The rest of it doesn't look too bad, but those spots need to be sanded down. We can see they're right there and it is rust and it isn't coming off. So this is 400 grit and we're just gently going to use thumb pressure on top. There's actually some more down here. Same, just touch pressure. Totally gone, so that was just surface rust. Check for the nicks and dings. There's one. Right there. Now you go around the tube, not up and down long ways. Yeah, always. This is not aviation. 
where you polish up and down so your eye doesn't catch it. There's another one. That's gone. And one, two more right there. The tube is going to get polished properly, but in order to get the oil out, we've got to send the dust seal all the way down. So there's no point damaging anything when for a couple of seconds work. We can get rid of the notches and the rust spots. Yep, that's it. Okay, so now we'll unscrew the cap. And that opens that up, so the caps were actually nice and loose, so it came apart really easily. So, how much stiction is there in the fork? <laughs> Quite a lot. So we got to grease the seals as well. Lots of stiction. Okay, so now we've got to take a look at how bad this oil is and pour it out into the jug we have prepared. So that's five weight oil. That's not original oil. And that's pretty dark. When we get to the bottom, it's gray. And you can see all the silver flushing in now at the top. So that's all the metal coming out of the bottom of the fork. She was hurting. So that's been changed quite, relatively speaking, that's been changed quite recently. That's the good news. So, let's put that on the floor. Now we've got to pump the fork cap to empty the inner cartridge. Do it again. Again, lots of silver coming out. Lots and lots of metal. Now, if there's no hydraulics in it at all, as in the, all the oils out of the cartridge, there's gonna be no hydraulic resistance coming up. So that suggests that the cartridge itself is empty. So this will probably be the last pour. Is there anything? Yes. Oh. More silver. It's like having a pea shiver, that last little squirt. Now the goal is to get 99% out, which we've clearly done. Once this starts dripping, that will be, as far as I'm concerned, be enough. You can see how silver the top of the oil is now. There's the drips, so at that point I consider that enough. So we'll set this to one side. Now we need to figure out how much oil's in there. So it looks like 400 cc's just over. This is our 10 weight that we're gonna put in the forks, so comes with a nice tear off cap inside to show it's brand new. Just lift it up and peel it off. And then we want 400 cc's 
which is the third line from the top. That's a color difference. That's perfect. Okay. We're going to pour the oil in. Now remember, everything's empty. So you want to tip this back and pour slowly. Because the last thing you want is a big mess. At some point, it'll start to gurgle as the air comes, starts to purge itself out of the inner cylinder. But don't rush this pouring part. Okay, so that's done, go backwards, click, that means the threads are engaged, so now we can screw it in. That's closed, so now we need to purge the air out of the hydraulic system. So there's no oil in it yet, but then push a couple times. And that spring movement's gone completely. So now all the air's purged. You want to keep the fork upright because if you lay the fork on its side, all the oil dissipates out of the cylinder and you put air right back in it. So at this point we've got oil in, we've made sure the inner cartridge is full of oil and there's no air in it. So now we have to get into the cleanup phase. So, we've got to separate the dust seal from the tube and very carefully put a flat blade in. And then you can see the lip behind. So we gently walk that dust seal out. And there it's free. All right, we'll start at the bottom first. Turn it around. Again, it's just a light sanding. Get any rubbish that's on the surface out of there. Now, wipe that off. Bring it down and now go to the top, which will be much easier because you can do a 360. Okay, so this is high temp wheel bearing grease. We're only going to use a tiny, tiny little bit. And we're going to work this in all the way around the fork. Okay, we're going to take it out, lean on the top, and just exercise the fork. And that will give us a ring of grease. So now based on that, I'm going to push down as hard as I can to blow by that grease. And it took every last bit of that grease up. It did, right up into the seal. So now, let's open this up again. 
because we have massive case of stiction. No stiction. So backwards, forwards. All that's left to do now is tighten the cap up. That's, so that's a basic dump and run oil service. Dave Moss can tune your suspension no matter where you are on the planet via his remote tuning service. Contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.